Hello and welcome to the 13th video of my series on getting started with AutoCAD. My name is Chris and in this video we're going to be talking about controlling leaders with leader styles. Please note I'm using AutoCAD 2015. If you're not using it, yours will look different than mine. That out of the way, let's keep cranking here. So the question is, what is a leader style? A leader style functions like a text style but for a leader or uh, like a block definition but for a leader. The idea is that you can set up multiple different groups of, or multiple different styles of leaders that you can then apply throughout your drawing and be able to control your leaders by style rather than individually. So if you need to make a big bulk change to, let's say, the text or the arrowheads or some aspect of your leaders, you can do that in batch without having to go through and fix every single instance of your leader. So let's look at this really quick. If you head up to the Annotate tab really quick, and you head over to the, the leaders, pardon, leaders section here, and you click this little arrow, this will bring up the Leaders uh, Style Manager. You'll notice up at the top here that you have the ability to do an annotative leader in addition to a non-annotative leader. And this functions the same way that annotative text functions or that annotative blocks function. And if you've got questions about that, I would recommend you go back to my my uh, video on text and take a look at the annotated text section in that. Let's go ahead and take a look at what makes up a leader style. So we're going to go ahead and just modify this basic one. You'll notice we've got three main tabs here, leader format, leader structure, and content. And you can see this is all pretty straightforward stuff. We can pick how our leaders are formatted, right, how, how they're built and how everything fits together. We can change the way that our, our leaders look. We can change it to be a dot. We can do all sorts of stuff with that. Um, we can change break sizes and size of the head of the, of the arrow and line weight, line type. Heading over to the leader structure here, this allows us to be able to control the uh, some, some additional functionality about the leader itself. A lot of it relating to uh, kind of how text works in relation to this or um, how things are going to scale if you if you were to scale this leader heading over to the second tab you can control constraints land, landing settings and scale um, for how things function in the leader and again you have the option to make it annotative right here you can set an annotative leader for those of you who don't remember what annotative is um, annotative means that whatever size the definition of the block is, or the definition of the text is, or the definition of the leader is, is how big it's going to appear in paper space. So as long as you have the appropriate scale represented in the drawing. So let's take a look at this last tab here really quick. And this is content. This allows us to determine what goes on to the leader itself. Do you want text? Do you want a block? Do you want nothing? And you can you can control all of this through this section here. And again, this strings in with text styles and block definitions like we just talked about. In fact, I stopped recording this video um, about a week and a half ago to do the, the video on blocks, specifically so we could talk about blocks in relation to leaders. So we're gonna come to that in just a bit here. So that's that's kind of the, the makeup of the the leader style, multi-leader styles. Um, something to remember is that there's what's called a, a leader and there's something called a multi-leader. Multi-leaders are pretty much what you're going to use exclusively. So when I refer to a leader, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Um, standard leaders don't have the ability to have multiple heads on them and they function a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and make a new leader style here. We call this one testing. I'm going to start with the standard leader style, and we're going to leave it non-annotative just because it makes things a little more quick for us. And what I want to do is I want to have a leader that has uh, a dot in it, large filled dot. That's good enough. And we can change the size of the dot so that it comes in at 0.125, an eighth of an inch. Um, 
and everything else here is fine. We can say, unless you want that to be a spline or something like that, we can, in fact, let's switch it to be a spline, that's fine. Our leader structure, we're gonna keep the way it is. And our content, we're going to keep as an M text. And go ahead and click OK, and go ahead and click Close. Now when we go up here, we'll notice that we have the ability to select that leader style from, from the selection of, of additional leader styles. So let's add a multi-leader in here really quick, and you can see in comes our leader style. We can add some text to it, and there we have it. Now you'll notice that this text is pretty small. So let's say that we want to make a change to this so that this functions a little more cohesively and that the text is a little bigger and everything's a little easier to read. What we can do is we can go here to the leader styles. We can go here and modify. We can go to leader format. We can say, okay, the dot is pretty good, but we're gonna make it, let's say two. So we'll make it quite a bit bigger. Let's say, yeah, uh, yeah let's say two. It's through kicks and giggles. Go ahead and click OK, and you'll notice that your dot actually disappears. And this is because your text is too close to your dot to be able to, your text, your arrowhead, to be able to read properly. So you have to have a specific distance away from your text for that to be able to read. You'll notice we didn't change our text size. But if we have multiple instances of this, right? These can all have different text on them, right? So that one's got different text, all that stuff. We can control all of these, just like we controlled blocks through the block definition, and we controlled text through text styles. We can control all of these leaders through the, uh, the leader style. So let's say we want our text to be four inches tall. So we're gonna click okay, click okay again, and you'll notice they all update. It's really nice to have this functionality added to your drawing to be able to control aspects of the drawing. The more things you can control in your drawing um, in batch, the better off you're going to be. Because it means that when you get to the phase of detailing in your drawing, that you won't be spending as much time doing little tiny things here and there. And, uh, you know, you're gonna save yourself an ulcer, so. So, that's the leader styles in a nutshell. Now let's talk about, there are things that we can adjust, like the spacing in here, and we can adjust all sorts of different aspects of these, these leaders. Let's talk about um, a couple different things here. One is being able to attach a different block to the arrow, as the arrow, and the other is being able to attach a different block as the object that, it's, that it's the leader is attached to. So let's go ahead and look at, let's start by making a block here really quick. Now if you watched my last video, you should be able to make blocks and edit them and all that stuff. So we're gonna take that. I'm gonna assume that you understand how to, uh, how to do that. We're gonna call this end. Good enough, I'm gonna take this, move that to zero comma zero. Actually, I'm going to move this whole thing to 0, 0. There we go. Just save and close it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open up the leader style. We're going to go to testing. We're going to go to modify. I'm going to change my, my uh, arrowhead here to be a user-defined arrow. And we can pick a block that's in our drawing. So I'm going to pick end. And you'll notice in it comes with that, um, with that arrowhead. And the, one of the things you'll notice is that the, the point of origin is actually where the, the leader comes off in your drawing. So if we move that point of origin, you can you can control how that attaches to the leader itself. So let's go ahead and click OK, click OK, and you'll notice all of our leaders update. So you can control things that way. Let's go ahead and draw another block here. I can just have that be a rectangle here. And we're going to call this a rectangle. Actually, it's called. It's not a rectangle, is it? There we go. I'm going to put that at our point of origin here. So this is where our leader is going to snap to. I'm going to save and close. I'm going to bring up our leader.
style manager and we're going to modify this and head to our content section and select the option to have a block as our multi-leader type and our source block is going to be a user block it's going to be quad we go and click OK and you'll see here that comes in just like that now you notice that nothing changes on these and the reason is is because AutoCAD is smart enough to know that if you've entered text you might not want to overwrite it with with existing um, with new content so what we can do and get rid of those two instances of those blocks there is when we add a new leader in you'll notice it comes in with the right information but existing leaders with text in them won't have that won't have the text removed text will be updated if the text style is updated or different things like that but the actual um, the content itself won't won't modify anyhow that's leader styles in a nutshell if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comments below if you thought this video was great go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you thought this video is life-changing go ahead and subscribe we'll bring you more of them and i will see you in the next video